What's up guys, Jacob here. We are reading this Overwatch 2 developer blog, post-launch updates on gameplay, maps, and competitive. This is a quite a long article in my opinion. I probably like maybe a 10 minute article. I mean a quick read, but a 10 minute little discussion. So let's get right into it. So, since the launch of Overwatch 2, we've welcomed millions of both new and returning heroes to the game. While most of our updates so far have been about efforts to address the game's servers and stability, we also know players are eager to hear about what we're working on for gameplay and other topics. We've seen Sojourn, Joker and Queen, and Kiriko completely rock the landscape of the game, blasting and slicing their way into many victories on the battlefield. And today, we want to look back at the first week of this brand new chapter for Overwatch and share with you on uh, what the team's current thinking of the hero balance and gameplay. All right, so let's see. Hero balance. Damn. Oh damn, I didn't mean to highlight everything. Uh, while some heroes are performing better than others, there are differences across player skill levels. Uh, that is very true. Uh, we have been happy to see that no hero overall power level is too far outlined. Sorry, is far out of the line. God, I can't read. This. No hero's overall power level is far out of line with our goals. There we go. I do. Every hero on the roster can ha or has a win rate between 45% and 55%. Interesting. Uh, and we are not planning any immediate balance changes based on what we're seeing. With the exception of a targeted adjustment to Zarya and Total Mayhem, which should go live with our next major patch on October 25th. Which, October 25th is going to be the Halloween event and everything, so get ready for it. Um, instead, our team is planning to make a series of balance changes for Season 2 that are in line with our design goal of ensuring the overall game feels balanced and fair, while giving each season more distinct identity. While we continue looking at hero performance and listening to player feedback, prior to finalizing any specific changes to balance for Season 2, we want to share more about what we're seeing so far. Okay, so... They're not going to nerf anybody this season. They're going to wait to the end of the season. Uh, personally, I don't know how I feel about that. I think if something's broken, or not broken, but it's really strong and is, you know, clearly meta-changing, I think it should definitely maybe be looked at instantly and not have to wait a whole season. Uh, like, Zarya right now is very strong with the whole double bubble thing. Like, she's really hard to kill. And if they're just going to leave it like that for the whole season... That's kind of going to get annoying, right? Like, everyone's going to be like, oh, well, I can't play any other tank. I have to play Zarya, or I have to play D.Va, or, you know, these these two are the strongest tanks. So I have to play these two, because if I don't play these two, I'm not going to win. You know, it's, but, it, you know, the whole game is they're trying to make everyone playable. So the fact that it's not looking like that is kind of why. Tanks fighting on the front lines. Since shifting to a 5v5 format, we've seen many players focusing on more tank role given the heightened importance of a single tank in role queue modes. One of the most talked about heroes on the roster right now is D.Va. With buffs after the last beta for her defense matrix and micro missile, she can put up a fight longer than she could before Overwatch 2. Despite many players she's saying she's one of the best tanks in the game, Ryan, Sig, Zarya are currently uh, leading the competition range or the competition with an average of 53% unmirrored win rate. Zarya's new ability to choose whether her two particle bears can be on her or an, an enemy, or not an enemy, but on her, uh, her teammate, is uh, to build energy up quickly is um, something they're looking at uh, for her potential changes. So that does need to be changed. Either, because in the beginning, like, I didn't like that, that you could just use two, like, that they're sharing a cooldown. But that is a good thing, because now it's a really good thing, I mean, for Zarya players, because you can literally go in, bubble, get 60 shield, or get 60 charge, bubble again, get 100 charge, you're now wrecking the team. Like, it's ridiculous, so, yes. Junker Queen was a dominant force during the last beta test. Because of that, we applied changes to her commanding shout, reduced how brawly the death ball team compositions were at the time, at the highest skill levels, including the Overwatch League. We'll keep an eye on her performance in the upcoming weeks to ensure she's an effective tank and fun to play. She's still fun to play. Because I still have a good time playing her. But she does lack damage. Uh, she just doesn't do much now. 
because now Zara is the best pick of the game. So, yeah. Uh, definitely gotta probably fix her up a little bit more. Uh, the team's also monitoring Doomfist. Yes, a lot of people say Doomfist sucks, and it's true. He's kind of trash compared to all the other tanks who can, like, literally outclass him. Also, uh, I know I made a video the other day of ranking characters, and a lot of people got upset that I put Arisa in B tier. And, yes, Arisa is good at low-level play. She's not that great at high-level play. Because it's not hard. Because high-level players will just headshot her and she will die. Or, she'll kill her tank or her healers and she will die. Like, she is easily countered in high-level play. So, yeah. Not too hard. Uh, so yes, the team's also monitoring Doomfist. And... We'll be looking to season two. We make it think sense to evaluate his overall tanking ability and potentially make improvements to power block and meteor strike. Meteor strike is his ultimate. Personally, I think it's such a nice. Anyways, yes, definitely probably bluff, bluff, buff, power block. <laughs> Slicing through the competition. The damage roll has some many hero combinations across all ranks, but we know some popular picks among our players: Genji and Sojourn. Yes, Genji is strong, but Sojourn needs to be nerfed, like, she's too ridiculous. She either needs a mobility decrease, like, her thing needs to be on a longer cooldown, so that she doesn't get as much mobility, or she needs to do less damage. It's just ridiculous on how her role is. Uh, so yeah, the most popular heroes, uh, but they've since leveled out the rest of the damage roster. Genji started off with the dominating win rate, and although it slightly, uh, slowly, fuck, I can't read, I'm sorry. It's lowered slightly since the launch, currently at 52%. We want to make sure he's not dominating the playing field. He's not. Uh, he's got a lot of counters. I mean, especially that people are picking Zarya, I mean, literally, Zarya. Beam, you can't deflect Beam, like, easily able to kill. He's not hard to kill. Like, he's hard to kill, but he's not impossible to kill. Sojourn, on the other hand, is very annoying. So, personally, I think they should be looking at her instead. You know, new hero, they want them to be busted for a little bit. We'll watch Genji carefully throughout the season, ensure he doesn't slice up in competition too much, and make adjustments in Season 2, or May. One way we're considering doing this is through the adjustment of the damage roll passive, which is particularly benefited here by Genji. Summer is also hacking her way through the competition, Oh, sorry. Do her through the backlines in many games. We just her damage potential to be optimal on targets that she has. However, we want to ensure her targets have a reasonable time to fight back. So we'll continue to look at her balance hack ability lockout to lockout duration when we approach season two. We've also heard feedback that tanks feel oppressed when Sombra is focusing them with hack, which will lead or sorry, not which will lead, but which will be also be something we look to control next season. Yeah, so Sombra focuses tanks and just hacks, 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 hacks the same tank. It, they just can't do anything. And it does just get so annoying. So, yeah. In, in a sense, like, it's a good thing for, like, oh, I'm hacking the Zarya, hacking the Zarya, hacking the Zarya, you know, they can't do anything. But when you're playing that tank, you just feel like, well, why do I, I don't want to play anymore, you know, if I can't do anything. Like, like, I'm trying to use my ability, I'm trying to play these characters, and now I can't because I'm just constantly getting focused by this random character. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I understand that. I understand that. Sim and Torb are two other damage heroes that we're keeping in close eye on. Over the first course of the week, their winners have gradually, gradually been increasing. So she, um, and maybe enjoying their success due to his pop. Oh. Both heroes can be effective counters to Genji and maybe join their ex success due to his popularity. Yeah. Uh, when we potentially make changes to them, we need to keep in the mind the landscape for the rest of the hero roster. For example, when Genji is tweaked and possibly played less, these heroes might see less success and not need adjustments themselves. Exactly. So, it's a good example of like, it's a great example actually. Like, you play Mei, so Genji, right? He, he he's fast. He does all these shurikens. You play Mei or Sim, you know their beams slow him down, right? Their beams slow him down. So if he just gets beamed and he just starts getting destroyed by them, they don't need, you know, that's a way to counter him. So it's not really that he doesn't need a nerf, or maybe not. He doesn't need a nerf, but they don't need to nerf, right? Because if no one's gonna play Genji, 
then people are gonna be like, okay, well, we don't need Sin. We don't need May. We don't need, uh, we don't need Tor. You know? Well, maybe not Tor, but we don't need Sin. We don't need May. We don't need characters who have beams because they don't have a game. You know? So it's stuff like that. Now we're moving on to Kiriko. Sly as a fox. Kiriko has been well received by the community with initial play rate of over 75%. In most matches when we first launched, making her an instant favorite among many players. This play rate has been since balanced out, uh, out compared to the other support heroes. However, her win rate has increased from 48% to 52% as players learned her kit and playstyle over the past week. Her healing averages in the middle when you compare it to the rest of the support roster. Her damage output right now is even with Ana, which is relatively low compared to heroes like Lucio, Moira, and Brigida. Kiriko gets a lot of value in her evasiveness with wall climbing and swift steps to get out of harm's way, allowing her to live longer in team fights and making her the most survivable support hero on the roster currently. We are keeping an eye on how she performs in the weeks ahead of Overwatch League playoffs next month. She's currently not competitive, so they're not going to do anything to her because they don't know how she's going to work in a competitive scene. So, that's kind of what they're going to try to see. Uh, I don't think she's broken. I think she has a high skill too. Uh, cause 40 damage is, is pretty crap. Uh, with her basic, you know. But if you are hitting the headshots, then she's gone too. But if you're not, and you're just like missing, and you're doing that, and you're just heal body, she's not that good. Uh, she's really good, but she has a high skill tier. So, yeah. That makes sense why they have more going on. Missions around the world. With new and returning maps, Based on locations we'll arrive, we want each season in Overwatch to feel refreshing and exciting for new players, for new and returning players. To support that goal and also allow our team, we think it's appropriate to make adjustments for our maps, we have begun to run a map tool featuring all the new locations and many original maps. For season 1, we're playing on the following maps for both quick and competitive players. So we have all these maps right here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slightly just highlight them all so you can see them. Shoot. If you want to see them, I'm going to highlight them right now. I'll give you a second. I'm going to give you like a 10 seconds. You can look at them. You know, realize what we're playing on. Uh, I think that all maps should be in the game at all times. I don't think that map rotation is a good thing. Uh, like, if you have all the maps into the game, you don't, you know, you're, you don't know what you're going to get. And you're always going to get something new. Right? Like, for example... I've played Circuit Royale, right, probably five times now, like, I'll play, let's say I played for three hours, let's say I played for four hours a day, right, I've gotten, I'll get one of these maps, I don't care which one it is, which game mode it is, but I'm guaranteed to get one of these maps, at least four times, because, for some reason, I just get the same map over and over and over again, right? I don't. I personally think you should have every map in the game. Obviously, besides two CP, you know those maps don't exist because that game mode doesn't exist anymore. But those should be implemented. Every map in the game should be in the game. I don't know why they're not doing that. Anyways, each subsequent season will rotate some maps out of the map pool and bring others back that haven't previously out. As we continue rotating maps, we'll be looking, improving, and, and tweaking them. So, for example, when Rialto turns in season two. Players will notice a few spots where we have additional cover, which should help the map play better. Ooh, in a 5v5 environment with reduced shields. For players who want to play maps not currently in the map rotation, hop into a custom game or the occasional arcade mode. Climbing the ranks. Our team would like to apologize for the ranking that many players are too low during the first week of Overwatch 2. Uh, I got gold 5 or gold 1? I think I got gold 1. I think I got gold 1. It was gold something. Uh, yeah. We discovered a bug that impacted players' skill ratings, which has contributed to many players being placed in Bronze 5, when they should have been placed higher. Our most recent patch included a fix that will help you get back to your true rank quickly. That will be reflected the next time you receive a competitive ranking update. You will also receive a boost as you continue playing to help out, to help get your, get you up to the correct ranks. Players who haven't yet placed in competitive won't experience this issue after the fix goes live. We're also watching your feedback and how we present your skill, tier, and division, and how you celebrate that in-game. While we don't have any details we can show, details we can show yet, expect us to make more improvements in competitive, and we'll continue to watch your feedback. 
So one thing they did in competitive is they removed like the little bro like the little symbol. So like I'm gold, right? But if I join a competitive game, I don't get to see everybody's rank like how I would. Like if I was plat Overwatch one, I would join and I would see either plats or golds in my game. But now I can't see that because they don't want people to go, oh, like if I'm a diamond player and you join and you're a diamond player and you have a plat on your team, they're going to go, oh, shit. Who's this plat player? Oh, why are we playing with a plat? Why are we not playing with a diamond player, right? Like, they want to remove that. So, they want to remove that toxicity. And while I think that's a good thing, people want to see their thing when they get into the game. And I want to see mine too. Like, I, you know? So, I think it's a little silly. But I hope they add something to it. Thank you for week one and here's to many more. Finally, we ensure games that play fair. We want to ensure games play out fairly in all players and matches. In a future patch, we'll fix an issue that could cause some underbanding in a game. We also want to s be certain that a hate registration for shots fired is working pixel perfectly. We investigated reports from players about hate registration, and many players are reported to actually. R many reports. Sorry. And many reports are actually related to how our replay tool works, which does not perfectly capture the alignment of each player's aim. There is a misconception about how controller settings on PC works, which does not affect the mouse input. As for an example, aim smoothing under gamepad does not impact mouse input latency or precision. However, in one report we discovered a bug that affected the hitbox alignment of our rendered objects for Junker Queen in some specific situations. We are working to diligently to, to fix this issue uh so this is just like okay so it's we understand that pc players okay so this is just like fix your settings it's like if you have problems with your settings you know your resolution your frame rate your video card you know yeah last paragraph thank you to all the players who were part of the first week of overwatch 2 while this time has been incredibly exciting for our community and team it's also come with many challenges that we're looking to address quickly we will continue to listen to player feedback and strive to make Overwatch 2 the best game it can be. And we are looking forward to sharing more in the coming weeks leading up to Season 2. In the meantime, we hope everyone is having a blast in the game, and we'll talk again soon. I was- I like that they're talking to us. I hope there's like a weekly thing they do. Um, but, yeah. What'd y'all think about that? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, my thoughts? Uh, let's go- let's go over it quickly. Uh, Nerf Sorgen, she's insanely strong. Nerf Zarya, uh, she's insanely strong. Or, or maybe like Tweak, maybe not Nerf them heavy where like, oh, I don't want to play them anymore. But Tweak Zarya's bubble, Tweak Diva a little bit. Actually, I don't know if it's you. Uh, you know, Tweak Zarya for sure. Tweak Sojourn, make her ability, like, make her slide four more seconds longer cooldown. Or like two seconds longer. So... Or, like, make her railgun have a higher charge rate so she doesn't get the railgun as fast. Um, Kiriko, I, I have no problems with Kiriko because she just has a high scaling right now. Or high skill ceiling. Uh, for this, I just feel like, why not play all the maps, right? Like, I, I wish you could just play all the maps. So, other than that, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you guys think on this. Um, you know, let me know what you guys think. Uh, last thing, I know they're doing a little apology thing here. Um, I'll show you, like, where is it? Uh, season one. Uh, no, news community forums? No, maybe, um, media? Um, comics, short stories, no. Um, videos, no. Screenshots, no. No. Um. Maybe news then? Um. It's, it's basically. Uh, it's basically right here. Patch notes? No, it's, uh, it's close. It's close. It's a Reaper thing. A little reaper skin y'all can get. Um, huh. Let's see here. Let's go to Twitter. I know Stylus is gone. 
Um, let's see here. So, right, if I scroll down a little bit. Maybe. Um, it's basically Reaper is getting uh, a new little... Uh, it's getting a new little thing where he they're, they're doing like a little apology video where they're like I'm sorry this this and this um yeah perfect go to Aaron Keller Let's follow uh Aaron Keller right here um right here no I don't know but yeah basically. They're apologizing by giving us some free stuff for the Overwatch, like, launch. Kind of bad. So they're like, sorry guys, let's give you that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe, tell me what you think in the comments below about this new patch. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.